Hey, are you spending too much time where you're giving your wife leftovers of your time, effort, love, and energy? Well, you might be a little selfish. So in today's episode, we are going to unpack the impacts of spending time and not spending time with our wives and making better choices with our time so that way we can grow our marriage into a more meaningful and loving relationship. Stay tuned. You are listening to the Husband Coaches Corner, the podcast designed to teach husbands how to love their wife each and every day and become better men in the process. I'm your host, Chris Scott, and welcome back to another episode. Welcome back to the Husband Coaches Corner. Now, if you are just tuning into the series, you are listening to part two of a four part series. Now, this series is really centered on how we can become more selfless as husbands. And this is really just getting after that selfishness that all people, even our wives, they have a little bit of selfishness in them. But we're going to focus on husbands and how we can become better husbands in that selfless process. Now, with that being said, uh, there are four parts to this series. The first part was all about immaturity. If you haven't caught that, I really, really recommend that you go back and catch that. The second part today is going to be all about making better choices with your time. And then the third part is insensitivity. And the fourth part is going to be stubbornness. Now, this is going to be a great series that's going to really illuminate some of the things that you may do that you don't even realize that you're doing uh, that are selfish and you'll become more selfless and you'll love your wife in the process a lot better. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Now, many coaches will tell you that time is the greatest resource that you have. And that's what we're going to try and unpack in today's episode. So that way you understand where they're coming from. If you've never heard a coach tell you that time is one of the greatest resources. Now you're hearing me tell you time is one of your greatest resources. And by the way, we all only have 24 hours in the day. What we choose to do in those 24 hours is where we make the difference. So what is time? Well, it's intangible, meaning it doesn't exist physically. All right. So just stay with me and getting a little philosophical here, but understanding the concept of time, it is intangible. You can't touch it, right? You can't see it. it. It's just not there. However, it exists, right? Uh, it's uncontrollable. We can't start it or stop it. It just continues. It happens. The second that I started recording this podcast, I lost that time to developing this podcast. The second you turned on the podcast, you lost the time to do every, anything else, if you know, you may be walking or working out, but uh, you're listening to a podcast and you're using the time to do that instead of doing something else, right? Um, and then the last one is it is relatively infinite, but circumstantially finite. Relative to where you are today, there is perceivably more time in the future, relatively infinite, right? We don't know when time will stop. I do believe that someday time will stop, but we're not going to get into that. However, circumstantially finite, meaning I know that when my kids are in the house and, you know, if most parents subscribe to their kids leaving at 18, going off to college, things like that, right? Uh, that That's just a cultural norm we accept. Well, I know that circumstantially for my child to be in the house, they're going to be there until they turn 18 in most cases. Right. So that's what I mean by circumstantially finite. But we're also circumstantially finite in our lives because we really don't have eternity in this physical realm. So uh, something to keep in mind. Right. This is the reason why time is our greatest resource, because we can't get it back. We can't buy more of it. doesn't matter how much money you have. Now, there are some uh, strategic things that you can do if you do have finances that support your uh, lifestyle, where you can perceivably regain time 
by not having to do certain things, right? Like if you can pay someone to cook dinner, guess what? I don't have to sit around and uh, cook dinner in the kitchen. I can pay someone and go do something else with my time. So uh, there, there is a way to perceivably regain time. So how does this impact our marriages? And, you know, I, I don't believe this to be an exhaustive list. I only honed in on two, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is experiences or the opportunities that we have in our marriage that time allows, and then growth. How, and growth can be positive or negative. It doesn't have to be something that is, you know, I would like growth to be positive, right? We always want, when we talk about growth, we talk about like progressing. Um, but really, you can grow into a distant relationship by doing the inverse of what we talk about or the opposite of what we talk about in today's episode. So I hope that that resonates with you, that time, it will impact your marriage, either positively or negatively. And as husbands, we're the, we're the leaders, we're the head of the household. It is our responsibility to drive the, the growth in our marriage, right? Now, our wives, they have to bring their responsibility as well, and they have to help uh, drive the marriage into a successful relationship as well. But it really does start with us as the husband, all right? This is why we have to learn to love our wives every single day. All right, so experiences. Now, I'm only going to touch on three things that experiences really span. But again, as I mentioned before, the opposite of each of these is true in uh, either positive or negative. So just think about this. I'm only going to talk about the positive aspect because, again, I'm trying to get you to go into that growth mindset that is on the positive spectrum. All right. So an opportunity to learn something new about your wife. That's the first thing. If you're not learning something new about your wife every day or at least once a week at a minimum, right? Um, you're going to be in a very stagnant relationship because there's no more curiosity about the woman that you spend your life with, that you're spending your life with. We, ought, we should be so curious about her that it makes us decide that I want to spend more time with her because the only way I'm going to learn more about her is if I spend time with her. All right. So let's think about that. If you're not spending time with your wife, then are you actually learning about her? All right. That's that's the first thing when we talk about experiences. Now, the the most powerful thing when it comes to experiences is the memory. Right. I think we can all look back on a time in our relationship when there was a positive memory and when there was a negative memory. Right. This is so important that when we spend time with our wife, we're actually creating those memories, either positive or negative, And you are in control of whatever that looks like. Right uh, now, your wife has some some play in this, but we as the husbands, we get to lead that. This is why, you know, dating her is so important now. We always want to try and create these memories. And the only way that that can happen is when we spend time with her. And it doesn't work if we're out doing something else that's separated from her that is of choice right now. I'm I want to be very clear. I am not saying at all that you should not have hobbies or interests outside of the home or anything of that sort. I'm not saying that what I'm saying is if you're doing that more then spending time with your wife to create these memories and to learn something new about her, then you're missing the mark. All right. That's what I'm saying. You should always have a dedicated time where you are loving your wife and you're not giving her the leftovers. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's keep going. So, uh, and then the last thing when we talk about experiences, it shows that you are present. Now, 
I don't want to sound cliche and be like, yeah, you got to be present, right? Because what does that even really mean? Like I'm in the room, you can see me, right? You can touch me, I'm present. Presence actually comes with more than just a physical presence or a, a physical appearance, right? Uh, just because you are standing in a place does not mean that you are present. Being present means that you are engaged. And that engagement comes in the mental capacity, right? What conversations are you having with your wife? What activities are you doing with your wife that's stimulating that memory, right? Or creating that memory. Because if you're just standing there and you think that that's being present, uh, you're probably creating a memory that's negative and it's going to impact your marriage likewise in the negative aspect, right? So you don't want to just stand around and be present and say, well, I was there, wasn't I? That's got to be good enough because sadly, and, and not sadly, right? Truthfully, it is just not good enough. Like, think about it. Would you want your wife when you guys are having sex to just be physically there, right? Now that's rhetorical. Think about it. You don't have to leave any comments or anything crazy like that. But just think about that. Is that what you want? No, you want her to be engaged. You want her to be into you, right? Same concept. We have to be engaged and we have to be uh, into our wives. So whenever you're deciding whatever your, your date nights are or your opportunities to spend time with your wife, maybe be a little bit more engaged, right? So let's move into growth, right? So if we're building these experiences, well, how is it going to grow our marriage? Two ways. First way, things take time to grow. And the second way, consistent actions, it makes things grow. All right. Let's unpack this just a little bit. Things take time to grow, right? We're talking about this uncontrollable, unstoppable force that is time. That's what we're, we're talking about. And as time goes on, it's not, it, it doesn't stop, right? So you don't become successful overnight. Very few people that do, uh, they don't hold on to their success. You know, there's a lot of uh, one hit wonders, but the people that are at the top of their game for a very long time, they're putting in the work and that work, it goes over time which is what leads into the consistent actions. That's what makes the growth consistently showing up and being intelligently and intellectually present, engaging with your wife. That's where the consistent uh, positive growth happens. But if you show up opposite of that, guess what? You're going to get the, the benefits of the opposite. You know, if I could just boil this down to something very simple, what you put in is what you get out. If you put a dollar in, you cannot expect to get a thousand dollars out. That's just not the way marriage works. OK, if you put a dollar in, you're getting a dollar back, maybe even 75 cent just because there's a tax to marriage that over time you, you start to wear thin with one another. Right. And that's why there's conflicts, because conflicts are a lot easier to have in marriage. In, in many uh, relationships than not having a conflict. It's a lot easier to get into an argument with your wife than it is to not get into an argument with your wife. All right. So what you put in is what you get out. And if all you're putting into your marriage is conflict, guess what? That's all you're going to get back from your marriage. And then that's going to over time cause an experience for you. All right. And that experience is going whenever someone says, hey, man, uh, how's marriage? Your experience of marriage is conflict. And if you like it or don't like it, then you're going to be like, that's either good or bad. Right now, if you like conflict, um, it, which conflict itself is not bad. Right. It, like we need the conflict to grow. And I don't want to get too far off topic, but moral of the story to spend time, what you put in. Is what you get out. So you have to be consistent at putting in good things 
so you can get that return on investment out of the marriage down the line in the long haul. So now that we understand the uh, the the impacts of time on marriage and you know the experience, the growth, uh, how we how our choices really do impact it, right? Uh, hopefully you started to kind of piece together like, okay, where do I spend my time? How am I spending my time? How is my wife perceiving how I spend my time, right? Just start thinking about those things because that does matter. It's very important that you think about those things uh, because your wife is already, even if she hasn't vocalized it to you, she's observing that and she's like, oh yeah, you're always out at the golf range. You always go out drinking with the boys or you're always in your man cave. Uh, you're always working on a podcast, right? Uh, I, I get a lot of things, which is the reason why I had to kind of pause on, on the podcast. Now I'm getting back into it. If you have been keeping up with the, uh, with the show, uh, you will have noticed that I had a huge gap between March and June. Um, a lot of that had to do with how was I spending my time? I had to go and, and uh, reflect on that for myself, you know? I try to tell you guys I'm not perfect. My wife will be the first person to tell you that I'm not perfect. Uh, And I'm not striving to be perfect, right? What I'm striving to do is be the loving husband that resonates with my wife. And as of yesterday, when I talked to her, uh, I'm checking that block. So, you know, it's it's working, I I think, or at least she's telling me it is. So uh, and don't be afraid to ask your wife. And if you are afraid to ask your wife, hey give me a report card. How am I doing? Then there's probably some other issues and uh, you should probably hit me up so I can give you a a coaching session and we'll figure that out. Um, There's no reason that you should be afraid to ask your wife how you're doing because that's the only way that you're going to get honest feedback and the real feedback that actually matters, right? Because it doesn't matter what I tell you or what I observe. It really doesn't. Because if your wife doesn't observe it and she doesn't reciprocate it or it doesn't resonate with her, then you've already lost because you're in a relationship with your wife, not me. Right. So just keep that in mind. Uh, But now that we understand the impacts of time on marriage and what we can do to kind of shape more wise choices. Well, let's talk about three more things. Let's create dedicated time. I talk about this all the time. Uh, Whenever I talk about spending time in marriage, right? You got to create that dedicated time. It's so important. You got to do it. But second, once you create it, you have to protect it and you have to own it. All right. Don't let the kids get in the way. Don't let your in-laws get in the way. Don't let your parents get in the way. And in very rare cases, you know, don't let your job get in the way. You should be planning this time. That is not during work hours, right? If you say something, if you work a nine to five and you're like, oh yeah, at three o'clock, we're going to go to the movies. Dude, that, that's terrible planning, right? Uh, now, I give a very uh, polarizing and off the top crazy example like that. But I do that so you can see like you got to do things that make sense, right? So look at your entire schedule, calendar, whatever it may be, and then make your time uh, appropriate to that and protect the time. And then the last one here, understand when you're giving your wife leftovers. This is like, this is a reflective thing. You have to look at it and say, okay, am I giving you a hundred percent of me? And I don't want to sound cliche because the truth is I don't always give my wife a hundred percent. But I know when I'm not giving her 100 percent as well. And it's in those moments when I say, "Okay, How much am I giving you and when am I going to give you 100 percent? Because my wife deserves 100 percent. But sometimes I just don't have 100 percent to give. And you're not going to always have 100 percent to give. Right. That's just that's just the reality of life. We are human beings. We're not robots or machines that can just pump out hundred percent of like, we have real life situations and and emotions and and things that hold us back from being the best that we absolutely can. But are you aware of it? 
And are you settling to just give your wife the mediocre you? Because you can't live on a relationship of leftovers. It's not going to survive. It's not going to make it. It it just won't. Right. Think about it like this. If you had to eat leftovers all the time, someone else is getting the better end of the meal, right? Because you're getting the, the last little bits that no one else ate either because there was too much or they didn't like it. Is that what you want to give to your wife and serve it up like it's a, a five course meal at you know, the world's best restaurant? No, that's, I, I, I would hope that's not what you want to give her. But sometimes you have to give the leftovers, right? Because some nourishment is better than none. And when you identify that you're giving her the leftover of you, say, okay, you know what? Today, I didn't show up very well for my wife. But tomorrow, we got this date. Is I'm about to knock it out of the park. And that's, that is the reality of marriage, right? You're not, and your wife, keep this in mind. Your wife is not always going to show up to be a hundred percent for you, especially after a long day with the kids or, uh, maybe something happened, you know, someone cut, cut your wife off at going to work, or maybe something bad happened at work and she's not going to be able to give you a hundred percent because she's distracted by that. So understand There's going to be occasions where you're giving your wife leftovers or not 100% of you. Maybe you can only give 30% and that's okay. All right. If no one else tells you that, I'm I'm here to tell you it is okay to give your wife 30% on occasion, especially when there's a circumstance that holds you back from giving her your all. All right. But what you should do is identify it and make sure that you go back. And you give her your all on another day because this is those consistent things over time, right? Whatever you do today has a, what you do today has the greatest impact on your tomorrow. Remember that. So make the best of every opportunity that you have today. So that way your tomorrow can be a little bit easier and a little bit better. You can't get yesterday back. So don't sit there and be like, oh, man, I wish I could have. I should have. Hey, get get off that pity wagon. You're not getting yesterday back. You're not getting that back. But you have today. And Lord willing, there is a tomorrow. And when you go into tomorrow, guess what? What you did today is what's impacting your tomorrow. No matter how far away your tomorrow is or how many tomorrows you get. What you do today is going to impact your tomorrow. And the other thing is success. It's earned or won or delivered every single day, but it's all based off of what you do today. So, you know, that that's just another tidbit that I wanted to, uh, to, to share with you. Now I've already said, you know, I want to be clear. I'm not telling you that you need to spend every single moment with your wife. However, if you find yourself spending too much time or not too much time, because that's that's arbitrary speak. If you find yourself spending a majority, if not all of your extra time, and this is time that's not already committed to going to work and, and things of that sort, doing other things, going to the golfing course, playing video games, watching TV, hanging out with your friends. If you find yourself doing that more than spending time with your wife, you probably suffer from this, uh, this selfishness disorder, if you will. And you should probably take some time to go and spend time with your wife. Now, I'll leave you with this. Leftovers are okay. However, sometimes you got to go out and make those gourmet meals. All right. And those gourmet meals, those are the opportunities where you find a way to love your wife every day. Peace.